Well, good morning and uh, welcome to, to uh, Good Friday here at Burnside City United Church. Uh, my name is Benji Callan. I'm one of the ministers here and uh, welcome to those who are watching also online. Uh, as I was uh, starting this service, I asked my friend Andrew to pray for me and he said, uh, right at the start, I said, oh, I love that, that prayer. And he said, well, I can't remember what I said, but he said, said some beautiful lines. He said, um, may today we know, may we know today the cost of our freedom, the cost of our freedom. And that, that's what our prayer is for this day, that we may know the cost of our freedom. It's a, a good Friday. It's a, a sad Friday. As we uh, go through this service, if this is your first time here at Burnside City or your first time even in a, a Good Friday service, uh, what we do is we, we go through the story of Jesus on his uh, last day. Where he, he was arrested last night and we'll, we'll retell that story. And uh, then he, he goes through and he sees a, quite a lot of people and then he dies on the cross and then he's buried. We will be retelling that story with different, different people reading those Bible readings and reflections and there'll be pictures as well. And I, I hope that you can see in the pictures uh, a little bit of the story and, and connect with what's going on as you watch it. We'll also be singing some songs after each of those uh, stories and reflections. And at the end, usually on a, on a Good Friday service like this it's it's a bit darker um, which means you probably can't see the person next to you as well as you might have um, maybe that's a good thing i'm not sure uh, but at the end of the service uh we 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 finish in silence we finish with quiet and uh just it's a time here for you to to be uh to be still if you want to reflect a little bit more and just leave when you need to leave uh there is some coffee and uh, Bristol coffee as well and hot cross buns afterwards. You'll probably smell that and that will tempt you. Uh, but I, I, I ask you, you know, just to sit here as, as long as you need to, okay, and, uh, and respect the, the quietness of the moment after the service. As we go through this, oh, actually, let me, let me say a prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus, uh, we, we thank you for the cost that you paid for us to be right here, right now, today celebrating the price of our freedom the price of our hope and let your glory shine this morning help us to see you more to understand how deeply you love us I pray this in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen so as, uh, if you've been here for the last few weeks, we've been looking at Jesus in his last week, a holy week. And a lot of his focus has been, he went into Jerusalem and he spent a lot of time in the temple. Here's a picture of not the temple, but a, a reconstruction of it. Now we don't actually see him going into the temple. It's not his choice. He, he sees other parts of Jerusalem. So I've got a map here of Jerusalem in Jesus' times. And... Um, this here, this star, that represents Jesus. And, okay, and as we go through the story, you'll see his movements. He'll, um, he'll walk around here and he'll go there and he'll go to a whole lot of other places and eventually to, to Golgotha, the place of the cross. So you'll see that as, you, uh, as the readings are, are mentioned. Um, so, so there's the temple and there's the Garden of Gethsemane. That's, if you were here last week, that's where he was praying so desperately in that garden uh, with those uh, olive groves there uh, looking over the temple prayed with great anguish and then we get to this moment just as he was speaking Judas one of the twelve appeared with him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests the teachers of the law and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. 
the men seized Jesus and arrested him. And then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. You might see him as this person here. There's a Judas, a Judas and there's Jesus. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with clubs and swords to capture me? Every day I was with you teaching in the temple courts and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. And then everyone deserted him and fled. And only in Mark's gospel do we get this next account. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus and when they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. And you can see him there. The, the story goes that uh, many think that this is actually Mark himself as a young man, the one who wrote this gospel that we'll be reading. So look at this picture, and you'll see a number of pictures. See the people. Remember them. Let's sing our first song, Man of Sorrows. Join us. Here, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, that's all 
they took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests on the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hand, human hands, and in three days we'll build another, not made with hands. Yet even their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came up. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You were also with that Nazarene, Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. You can see already the rejection that's happening to Jesus. He had his disciples there just in that garden just a few hours ago, and they've all left. They're all gone. There's no one there. They've been following him for three years. They've seen him do amazing miracles, teach amazing things. They've eaten with him, or drunk with him. They've shared the journey with him, and they are gone and, and even, even Peter, uh, who, sort of, who said, I'll stay with you no matter what, uh, he's disowned him. The, the chief priests, uh, they're the ones who, you know, Jesus should get to, along with them, and, and they know the scriptures, that they should be best buddies. They're rejecting him so forcefully, so violently. His own people 
have rejected him. Do you see the isolation of Jesus that's happening? To the point that you'll hear later when he's on the cross and he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Rejection and isolation. Please join me in prayer that's based on the reading that we've just had. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are a celebration of your creation. Living, breathing, thinking creatures with the most intricate and amazing bodies, minds and spirits. Inspire us to work together to collaborate, to share, and to encourage. May we never conspire against those with whom we share the earth. Lord, encourage us to be truthful, to share truth, to invite truth, and to teach truthfulness. May we never create falsehoods to sway a decision or for personal gain. Help us to see truth when it's presented and to seek it. Help us to use our minds to discern where falsehoods abound in this world. Strengthen us to shun violence, to support the bullied person, to have a real heart for the underdog. May we, may we respect and never harm any of your creation. Loving God, comfort us when we're faced with public acknowledgements of knowing you, of believing in you, or of worshipping you. May we never disown, deny, or desert you. May we never run or hide or be ashamed to call you Lord, the Son of God. We confess we've all had our Peter moments, but we thank you for your forgiveness and your grace, your encouragement and your love, and help us to share each of those gifts to us with the world this Easter and beyond. Amen. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But still Jesus made no reply and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What then shall I do with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him! they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. And wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified.
And so you may have noticed that uh, what Jesus accused us even is different to what he was when he was with the chief priests. It, it wasn't a, a, a cause of blasphemy. It was, he's the king of the Jews. Uh, Jesus was that Messiah king, is the Messiah king. And there's this irony uh, of the, the Roman officials there saying, hey, here's your king of the Jews, and you'll see him being mocked about that, with a fake crown and a fake robe, paraded around like a fake king. Yeah, but he was the king. We have Barabbas here, and he gets released. The, uh, Barabbas, that means uh, Bar- Bar is his son and Abba, father, son of the father. In many ways, we see ourselves in this person. He was released and free, and Jesus was captured and killed. You, you may be wondering, if you've followed this story for the last few weeks, you would realize that Jesus is very good at answering questions. He's always being accused in the temple all the time, and he has these beautiful, amazing answers. And you just go, whoa, that is otherworldly kind of wisdom. That's amazing. Why isn't he saying anything? Why is he silent? Do you remember what he said when he was arrested? He said, so that the scriptures will be fulfilled. He knew his scriptures well. The word made flesh, we're told in John's gospel. And here's one of those scriptures that talks about him as the suffering servant from Isaiah 53, verses 6 to 7. All of us, that's talking about here, every one of us, every one of us in the past and in the future, have like sheep gone astray or have strayed away. We've left God's path to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. You may know it as the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, and here it is. Yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep in sil- is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth, so that the scriptures could be fulfilled. I'm going to sing a song, O Sacred Head, Sore Wounded. I invite you to join with us.
The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace. This is the Praetorium. And called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling to their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to be crucified. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the son of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Come down from a cross, save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from a cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him.
At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom when Jesus died, when he breathed his last. What does that mean? Uh, The temple had this massive, big, thick curtain, and it was supposed to uh, hide the or keep the glory of the Lord. And uh, you couldn't really enter it unless you're really, really, really special and you'd clean yourself particularly, particularly well. For it to be ripped in two meant 
the glory of the Lord was now for all. What is the first thing that happens when the glory of the Lord is for all? The reading goes on. When the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus, saw how he died, he said, Surely, surely this man was the Son of God. And that's the first time that any person actually recognized Jesus for who he was. We start the whole gospel saying, This is the gospel, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the the Messiah, the Son of God. And the only one who's really kind of got that all the way through was God. You'd expect that. He kept saying, this is my son whom I love. There at his baptism, there at the transfiguration. Yes, Peter gets it for a little moment, but straight away he, he doesn't really recognize it properly. And in the end, he says, I don't even know the man. I don't even know him. And here's this centurion, this pagan who saw what had happened and said, surely this is the Son of God. Jesus, he died alone. He died isolated. He died, as I said, even saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The isolation that's there. However, If you think about it, in the last 12 hours of Jesus' life, he actually saw a lot of people. And a lot of them are are like side characters. If you were to put this on as a play, this, what we've just read out, I would actually need quite a lot of characters. Perhaps Jesus, on that cross, he could keep into his mind all those people he'd walked past. All those people he'd seen. And perhaps it's there that he remembers the scripture of what he's doing. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. So let's see who those all are. Just for the last 12 hours of Jesus' life. There was the the person who gave him, offered a drink. He didn't take it, but offered him a drink. Out of kindness, maybe? We're not sure. He offered him a drink. He would have had him. Okay, here's someone I love and I'm dying for them. The people next to him. Now, in, in Mark's version of the story, they're just hurling insults at him over and over and over again just to, to increase the isolation and rejection for him. There they are on the right and the left. Jesus laid on him Jesus, the, the, the Lord laid on him the sins of us all, including those two criminals. There was Simon, and there was his two sons, who, who were just innocents there. Rufus and Alexander. I love that we have their names. Why do we have their names? You have to think, maybe they actually became Christians. And maybe they were known by the early church. Maybe they were known by Mark, who was writing this down later. Hey, and Rufus comes in and says, did you put my name in there? I was there. Do you remember? Jesus was on the cross for them too. He had them in mind. There was Barabbas. There was the soldiers who mocked him. It says a whole company. Now, a company actually means 10% of a legion. That's 600 men. And, you know, they were just doing their job. So they've kind of done it before. Okay, mock someone, turn him into a fake king and laugh at him. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good job to have. Those 600 soldiers, Barabbas, the Lord laid on Jesus, the sins of us all, including those. And just moments before that, we have the, the high priest, we have Pilate, and we have Peter, his good friend. 
I don't even know the man. The one who pretended he didn't even know him. Jesus was on that cross for the sins of us all. How much love can one person have in one moment? And then step back just a few hours to that early morning. Uh, the one who had his ear cut off, and in another gospel it says that uh, Jesus healed that ear. Judas there betraying Jesus with a kiss. The man running away without his cloak, possibly Mark himself. It wouldn't have been too hard for Jesus to have all those pictures of all those people in his mind. If we read on, and we will very soon, it says that there were women watching from a distance, and it gives some names of those women. Because um, if you're a woman out there listening to this, you're going, hey, where are the women in this story? They were there. All these people. And, and Jesus loved them all and died of, for the sins of all of those people. And then the centurion watched all this happen. You know, it's not hard to imagine that uh, all those pictures that, are, that I've shown you, that we've seen throughout these stories, there was someone in the background at every single one of those pictures. Did you, did you recognize it? It was a centurion. It may have been, we don't know, it may have been that centurion at the cross, following Jesus just in the distance, watching him interact with all these different people. The Lord laid on him the sins of us all. How much love can one person have? As you see all those characters, there's quite a lot, isn't there? When you think about it, perhaps he wasn't alone. He was holding all these people in his heart. He held them there and he said, this is why I'm doing it. Not for what they've done to me, but because they need hope. They need new life. They need freedom. As you look at all those different characters, perhaps you're there too. We're just saying, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Which one are you in this story? Perhaps you recognize yourself in, in a few of them over different times of your life. Maybe right now you're, you're the woman watching from a distance or you're the one who isn't quite sure, the one who's just following orders, the, the one who, oh, I think he needs a drink. The one who says, oh, your teachings aren't quite right. Or like Pilate, I... I I don't know where I stand with this person, but it, it seems like he's a big deal. Who are you? Maybe an innocent bystander. I want to just have a moment of pause, a moment of quiet, and maybe you can reflect on the love, the amazing deep love of God shown through Jesus for all of these people. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you've done on the cross. And we thank you that uh, time and time again, just in those last 12 hours, you came across people uh, somewhere okay to you, uh, but most weren't. Most were terrible and awful to you.
but you held them in your heart. You didn't count their sins against you and want revenge. You wanted their redemption. You wanted their hope. 